Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and that your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit. Open our hearts to your word so we can do what you would have us to do and not only be hearers of the word, but be doers also. Transform us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So it was pointed out to me yesterday that though in a chronological sense, we are really close to the triumphant entry, but in a chapter sense, we don't get to the triumphant entry to Luke 19. So I'm sorry if I was unclear about that. Uh, there's a lot of details that happen in the Gospels uh, from, from this point on, and, and uh, much of John is just really absorbed with the, with the Holy Week. So uh, sorry if I was unclear with that. So we're in Luke 11.31. <laughs> Yes, Luke 11, 31, and we're in the NLT today, New Living Translation. Uh, we're talking about uh, Jesus is uh, comparing this generation uh, with other peoples. Uh, and uh, well, I talked about uh, Jonah and Nineveh a little bit yesterday. We'll talk about, uh, we'll follow through with that in verse 32. But starting with verse 31, uh, it reads like this. The Queen of Sheba will stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it. For she came from a uh, distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but you refuse to listen. Okay, so this is a, uh, this is a classic illustration of somebody's brilliance being so so spoken about worldwide that this queen traveled all the way to hear uh, the teaching of Solomon. And she no, brought gifts and exchanged gifts and all of that. But she was just wowed. So before Solomon got absorbed in all of his wives and concubines and stuff, what he did when he took over leadership is he asked God for wisdom to rule the people. And God gave him such an abundance of wisdom that people traveled from great distances. Now, the end of the life of Solomon is not as glorious as the beginning in that sense because he got um, absorbed by all of the gods of all of the wives that he had. But at this point, his it, it's rare that there's the wisest person in the world that has the most knowledge about so many subjects. Today, um, we pinpoint knowledge. If you're, if you get a PhD in some science or whatever, um, as soon as you publish your works, somebody is going to use them for greater discovery. So it's impossible to know all things uh, today. It is it is possible to know a lot of stuff today or to know a whole lot of stuff about a particular subject, but not. So here, um, good morning, Mike. So here we have the queen of Sheba. Now, how did she get to be queen? Well, she got to be queen because, um, uh, because she was political and, uh, and understood war and times and economics and all of the things that would make but renowned in the world for her, <coughs> that she's the Queen of Sheba. You don't have to say anything else, and all kinds of Hollywood movies have been made about that, and so and some of them are accurate. But no. this, this bright uh, world leader travels, I don't know, hundreds of miles to hear from Solomon, and Jesus says, somebody is greater than Solomon's here. Wow! What an incredible testimony of who Jesus is, that he is greater than the smartest man in Jewish history, and maybe and the smartest man of the world at that time. Uh, somebody greater than Solomon is here, and you refuse to listen. <laughs> That's the point, that, that, uh, uh, that Jesus is using this Gentile queen uh, who's willing to travel hundreds of miles to hear the wisdom 
of a Jew and someone greater than Solomon is here, but you won't even open your ears in front of him right now to hear him, namely me, Jesus. So, and a similar, we've got a similar comparison coming up in 32 in that the people of Nineveh. We'll get, we'll get to it in a second. So, the Lord God Almighty knows everything about every branch of science. The Lord God Almighty knows everything about every branch of history. The Lord God Almighty, so are there things about botany that the Lord God does, does not know? No. Are there things about the stars the Lord God doesn't know? No. Are there things about physics or astrophysics? The Lord God knows about all, about all things. Now, what modern people call science is kind of a trial and error and does it work in the lab kind of thing. Um, so what science may discover, God already knows whether that's true or not true or, you know, partially true. So, so the Lord Jesus has more wisdom than Solomon. Um, a Christian could say, duh, of course. <laughs> he is the creator of the universe. Of course he's smarter than Solomon. Even though, in Jewish eyes, you couldn't get any smarter than Solomon without being God Almighty. And, oh yeah, the Lord Jesus is God Almighty, and he's wiser than Solomon. And you refuse to listen. <laughs> I don't, uh, how, how pointed that is, uh, you know? Uh, yeah. But you refuse to listen. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 32. So for 30, yeah, 32. Now the people of Nineveh will also stand up against this generation on Judgment Day. Notice these, these are Gentiles on Judgment Day, and they're going to condemn the Jewish generation that that Jesus is talking to here. Uh, and can, uh, so the uh, uh, people of Nineveh are going to uh, judge and condemn this generation of Jews for they repented for their sins at the preaching of Jonah. And now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. So again, uh, Jesus drawing upon uh, a Gentile uh, peoples, uh, in both uh, she, uh, Sheba's case and uh, the Ninevites case, uh, as a being in a position of judging the Jews on Judgment Day. So I wonder uh, how that's going to play this out. A, this is a major slap in the face. It is. I wonder if that's going to how that's going to play out. I, yeah, I just it's... imagine a video recording, you know, sky wide, of of the people of Nineveh in sackcloth and asses. Oh God, have mercy on us, forgive us, and then that playing out while these these Jews are. Um, mocking and claiming blasphemy about Jesus and the 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 contrast between these Gentiles um, and, and and all the all the Jews know both of these accounts these stories and they're like oh yeah of course of course they went to hear Solomon speak he was the smartest guy in all uh, of course Jonah uh, eventually got around to preaching to Nineveh uh, he was a prophet. Uh, we hated the Ninevites, but but God loved them, and Jonah Jonah saved them, or Jonah was a conduit for saving them. And so, but you refuse to repent. So, uh, yeah, like a, a, a double slap in the head, uh, yeah. and and using and using um, visual pictures auditory pictures or whatever, that they, that they couldn't deny. I mean, they're, they're, however godly a Jew you were in that day, you knew about Nineveh, and you knew about the Queen of Sheba, and you knew about Solomon, and you knew about Jonah. You, you couldn't, this was culturally so ingrained, which is also one of the amazing things about how the Jews kept their their cultural identity, even in captivity and other, other difficult times, they they kept their culture because um, parents.
parents would teach their kids, and then they gather together and they tell and they tell the Bible accounts, the Bible stories, and and then those kids would tell. So because because they were passionate about maintaining their culture and about um, reflecting the goodness of God Almighty, that the culture stayed intact even under captivity. And so you think, how, how amazing that is. But you refuse to repent. But you refuse to listen. Like, sh like shaking them. You're, I'm the Christ, and you're not even paying attention to me. In fact, you're trying to do me harm. And, and look at these examples of history. Yeah, these are both triggered from their uh, wanting a sign, even though he had just given them a sign that was attributable only to the uh, Messiah. Right. Uh, that wasn't enough for them. And so this is why these, the, the, uh, he made these comparisons. That's right. Uh, so, and this, this looks like a disjointed next paragraph, but it's not. So let's talk about um, Luke 11, 33 and New Living. Yeah, receiving the light, uh, Luke eleven thirty three and LT. No one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Okay, so the Lord Jesus is the light of the world, and he talked about being light often, and it's it's my belief that he was born in the Hanukkah season, which is the festival of lights that the Lord Jesus... Now, there's some controversy about that. But but on, on Hanukkah, on one of the Hanukkahs that Jesus was ministering, was alive in, he says that... The Lord Jesus says that he is the light of the world. When you've got these massive menorah lighting, lighting the whole, like whole block, like lighting the whole region, and Jesus, oh, standing in front of that, says, I am the light of the world. Now, what's yeah. up? If you've yeah, got true. a light... Yeah, the giant candlesticks at the, uh, the giant candlesticks that, or, uh, that surrounded the temple of the Temple Mount that just, uh, they said they could see that for many, many miles. There you go. Uh, at night. But, so, yeah, sorry. No, no, uh, thank you. That's exactly what I didn't need, what I didn't say. Um, so, so Jesus is the light of the world, but the challenge here is, okay, Solomon, yeah. Solomon had incredible wisdom and I have more wisdom. Nineveh repented and you refused to repent. And now no one lights a lamp and hides it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it can be seen by all who enter the house. So it, it, it's another slap in their head. Like, even if you have a light, you just got to, you, you're putting a basket over it. <laughs> you're, you're, if any light that you have, you're hiding it. And, and, and why do the leaderships of the Jews hide it? Because they have rewritten the law so that they know every loophole. So... They can, they can look holy in their own eyes while not allowing their congregants to have that light. And you're hiding it under a basket. Instead, put your light on a stand where it can be seen by all who enter the house. Yeah, he, uh, he um, gets to the root of the issue, and that is uh, having uh, light within. That's right. Uh, Remember the verse that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. That's right. The eye, when you think about it, the eye itself does not produce light. That's right. It simply, uh, it simply uh, is the gateway for light That's to right. get into an individual. So if your, light is, if your eye is healthy, uh, what he's saying there is you, you, you perceive the light correctly, not only do you perceive the light, but it's it's inter it's it's taken in correctly, and uh, when your whole body is filled with light, um, you you provide light for your uh, okay. Again, yeah, thir verse thirty-four, the well, eye wait, is wait, wait, light wait, hold, hold on a second more, please. Okay, 
So, so often, how do, so we look at what does it say, what does it mean, and what does it matter? So often, believers hide their light. That uh, I, I, I preach in a number of different churches, and in some of them, um, the people are thrilled to be in church for their Sunday morning hour, but, but you know, you just talk to them afterwards, and you sense there's, that they don't want that light, they don't want anybody else to know about that light, which is an incredibly selfish uh, attitude. The, light, the love of Jesus is a good thing, and we should tell others about it, instead of hiding it under a, a bushel basket. Okay, yeah. 34. That's where, makes, that's where it makes the criticism. All right, sorry, 34, sorry about that. No, no, no. Uh, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your whole body. And again, the, the eye does not emanate light. It, it's the gateway for light uh, to enter the body. Yeah. Okay. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light because the uh, eye is working properly. But when your eye is unhealthy, this is I think this is the point here. It's, a way, it's the way you look uh, that uh, governs a lot of what you see. You could have uh, you know, it, two people can be looking at the same uh, incident or situation and see it entirely, obviously entirely different. I mean, we get this in politics all the time. Yeah. Uh, but the whole idea of uh, having an unhealthy perspective because your eye, in other words, it's a, it's a, it's a question of prejudice and the disposition of your eye as to how you see things. If your eye is unhealthy, as it says here in 34, your whole, your body is filled with darkness, exactly what you don't want. Make sure the light that you think you have is not actually darkness. I mean, you can misper misperceive to the point where looking at light, you think it's darkness. We have, you know, say, sayings that, uh, uh, well, there's a, um, a passage that says, uh, woe unto them who call uh, darkness light and light darkness. And, you know, this is a generation where it's exactly what we do to the point where we hear it in our ads about, you know, wicked uh, Boston, wicked ale and uh, um, these kinds of things where the darkness is uh, glorified. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's, this Jesus is what's pre he's preaching against this here. Uh, picking up in um, 36, if you're filled with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant, as though a floodlight were filling you with light. What an incredible... Got, again, this is, again, a question, question of perceiving the light. If God is light, that's what you, you know, the true God is light, let it come in. And what he's saying here is, you're mis you, you guys are misperceiving me. You're interested in things about me and around me and so forth, but you're not taking me in. That's right. And, and, that's, and the, that's the, the idea true is not... I am the true illumination. I am the light of the world. I Amen. am the true illumination. So oh, we think about sorry. this in terms of internally we need to become creatures of light, but externally we need to radiate that light to a to a dark and lost world. Right. We have to get the light in the first place. But. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You can't be... Yeah. You can't it be as radiant light not without dark. light. Yeah. Uh, Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for these uh, incredibly challenging passages, not only to the, the Jews of 2,000 years ago, but to, but to each of us who call your name. Let us live in the light. Let us hear your wisdom. Let us repent from our sins. I repent of my sins, O oh God. Transform us so we can make a difference. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you again. Thank you for your instruction and your examples here. and Help us take them to heart to understand what's here for us that we might help them. Uh, take it and apply it and make it part of our lives that we might live lives that glorify you yes. in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Have amen. a blessed day, all. Uh, prayer yeah. meeting is at 6 o'clock tonight. Blessings. Right. Hope you can make it.